Welcome to this edition of Miles Ahead and you join me here inside a Maserati Levante Trofeo with its ocean of Italian soft leathers and Alcantara headlinings and nice finishes. It does feel like a luxury SUV. Um, of course, every car manufacturer now has to do an SUV because people love them. They sell really, really well. And the Levante has been no exception for Maserati. Um, this is the Trofeo version though, so that means it benefits from a Ferrari V8, which we shall have a little bit of a look at. On the walk rounds, we'll have a look inside, uh, have a look at the exterior, look at the prices, the options, look at the engine, and of course, we will see what it is like to drive and just how good it sounds. Let's crack on. Right, let's start by having a look round the Maserati Levante Trofeo. Now, I think it's quite a fantastic looking thing. It looks better in the flesh than it did in the pictures and um, this rather fetching red paint goes a long way to that so I'm going to try to attempt to pronounce it now it's for <laughs> Ferisseri Rosso Magma paint um, I guess dark red in English um, it is the most expensive optional extra on this car though at £15,895 uh, it does look fantastic but you'd have to be keen on dark red for that other external optional extras include these 22 inch wheels uh, again I mean they do look fantastic don't they um, they're £2,970 and those Nero black brake calipers are £200 as well and if we have a quick look on the roof these dark finished roof rails are £700 but we'll get round get back to having a look round so you get the Trofeo logo on the side there with the three vents for the engine and you get these rather aggressive bonnet scoops that um, they do at first occupy your eye line they're like a, an angry crocodile peering up from the bonnet at you as you're driving but um, oh, I quite like them uh, you get privacy glass at the rear uh, another Maserati logo on the side there obviously 22 inch wheels at the back so we'll come round and have a look from the rear so I think it's a bit more subtle from the rear actually it's not as imposing and I quite like that it's um, yeah, so there's something quite understated about it, which, you know, there's a certain elegance that goes with that, I think. Um, we'll come in here and have a look at the exhaust. Now, we'll get to these on the drive-along. Uh, the sound from these is absolutely superb. You'd want the Maserati to sound good, and this one in no way disappoints. It really is quite something. Um, so, the overall cost of this car, so it starts at £123,070. Obviously a couple of optional extras that we've mentioned. Uh, there's also a Bowers and Wilkins upgraded sound system on this. I think as standard it comes with a Harman Kardon. I think you get roughly double the power if you upgrade to the Bowers and Wilkins system. Um, and I think it is, it is really, really good actually. I've been really impressed with that. Um, they did the sound system for the McLaren GT. We reviewed a few videos back and the sound system in that was really good as well so um, yeah they seem to be on point with their in-car audio systems at the moment and you also get the adaptive cruise control with the stop go functionality at £2,320 throwing your on the road charges and the total cost of this model that you're looking at here is £149,610 so every inch the premium SUV price but what's it like inside and what's it like to drive well let's start by having a look at that engine and look at that 3.8 litre twin turbo V8 provided by Ferrari so this is similar to what you'd find in the Ferrari Roma although it produces 580 horsepower which is slightly down on that although it does produce more torque but I mean this really is the focal point of this car this is what sets this car apart it is a stunningly good engine I mean the power delivery is so smooth so reliable and powerful as well I mean this car will do 0 to 60 in four seconds and that is because of that and it even looks good under the hood doesn't it I mean some of these cars you open them up you have a look and it's just you know a bit of plastic covering everything and it's nothing to look at but this is something you'd be you know you're going to be telling your friends about you're going to be showing it to them as well I mean it looks stunning it sounds stunning and the performance it delivers is stunning as well but anyway let's have a look inside the cabin so we'll start by having a quick look in the rear seats because this is the sort of car you'd be buying to ferry your family around in. Um, yeah, there's plenty of space in here, certainly. Um, quick look down there, you do get heated seats in the rear on both sides as well, which is really good. And, you know, there's an ocean of soft leather. It's really nice in here. Uh, you get a couple of USB chargers as well in there. Um, I've left my son's car seat in there just to highlight how much space there is in here. Loads of headroom as well, and you get that lovely panoramic roof, so it's quite nice and airy in here as well. And if I pull the armrest down, cut the cup holders in there, and there's also a through load to the boot. But anyway, let's see what it's like from the driver's position. Right, let's see 
what the Levante Trofeo is like from the best seat in the house. Right, we'll jump on in here, close the door. So immediately there's real nice touches of quality. Get the analog clock at the top there, I do like that. That's nice, it's surrounded by this soft leather finishing. Bit of carbon fibre down here. Um, I guess like the only drawback perhaps is like these buttons are straight out of something you might see in like the Jeep perhaps, but I mean, it's a minor drawback really. Similar with the vents and then the start stop button, but I mean, they're, they're tucked out of the way and it's it's a minor, minor drawback. I am nitpicking in the extreme with that. I mean, the rest of the finishing on here is superb. I mean, really nice stitching as well in here. Has a real quality feel and ambience to the car as well. And the steering wheel as well, not overcrowded with buttons either actually, which is quite nice. And you get the analog dials at the back for speedo and the revs. Um, we'll fire it up in a second, have a look at the um, infotainment system um, and you get this sort of plastic stalk at the back for your wing mirrors and your indicator and all that but you get these carbon fibre paddles as well and they do just feel nice in your hand which is good um, to come around to the practicality points so it's all laid out in carbon fibre down here uh, so a couple of cup holders been putting the key in there uh, there's another storage bin in there there's a usb charger in there as well and there's a i think there's a wireless charging plate in there as well and there's your hvac controls down there as well and there's another storage bin in the middle here which is nice and deep and you can get another couple of cups in there um yeah these seats are really really comfortable uh, i think they're 12 way adjustable um in the front here they are heated and air conditioned which is nice um so yeah, did did a long journey in this. I think we've done just shy of 500 miles in this over the weekend, and yeah, no complaints at all. It's been really comfortable place to be. Um, it's all Alcantara headlining up here, and there are some more controls here, so you can open the boot uh, from here as well, and control the sort of parking sensors, and open and close the blinds and the sunroof from there as well. But anyway, I will just start it up. Foot on the brake. Just hear that V8 rumble into life, which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, you've got the infotainment system over here. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is the upgraded one for the 2021 model. And yeah, this it's high def and all that sort of business. And it's, yeah, it's really good. So really, really easy to use. Um, so no complaints on that. And then yeah, you get this range of information in the middle here. So you can sort of cycle through your different options. Uh, so yeah, so uh, we've covered 473.9 miles. Um, average MPG 20.6. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best on petrol, but then, you know, you wouldn't expect it to be. And you're not buying a car like this for frugal driving anyway um, and this bit up here so you can change the ride height as you go along so I don't know if that will do that if I try and raise that now if you'll be able to see that in the video we're just rising up slowly but surely there um, and there you can see those uh, bonnet vents there like I said like a you see what I mean like it looks a bit like a crocodile peering out of the red water looking at you but um, overall really really comfortable place to be uh, I think everything's really well thought out in here it's nicely designed nicely laid out that sound system again Bowers and Wilkins really really good that is definitely an option worth considering if you like music when you're driving um, um, yeah yeah no no complaints at all really really nice place to be but what is it like to drive right what is the Maserati Levante Trofeo like to drive well stick it in Corsa mode first of all just livens up that V8 and uh, wait for this car to pass and we shall listen to it sing and that is absolutely superb I mean this engine is an absolute masterpiece it is wonderful I really really like it and the noise you get from it as well is absolutely superb that exhaust system is great I mean in any setting as well I mean we had it in Corsa setting there we're back into normal now and it just just sounds so so good all the time I mean, it's a wonderful wonderful thing and it just delivers so much power as well so as we mentioned you get the 580 horsepower that propels it from 0 to 60 in four seconds which for a car that weighs around about two and a half tons uh, is pretty good it's quick in all settings as well so this weekend um, we've driven it up to Leeds and back so as we mentioned we've covered 470 odd miles uh, it's just been really comfortable as well but on the motorway you know when you people move out of the way you can, you can really press on with the acceleration in this thing and it just uh, in those in that setting I mean on the motorway it is absolutely sublime it has been just fantastic really really good it just picks up in that mid-range like nothing else I mean it is astonishing um, and it's all from that Ferrari V8 so we're in normal mode now we'll try and have another listen to it I mean even in 
that is sounds great. It's just all the time. It's just it's, it's bang on it. And it's, I'm in love with this engine. It's it's incredible, and it just lends so much to this car. It sounds fantastic. Uh, you know, it sounds better than its German rivals. I mean, we've reviewed the Audi RS Q8 and the Bentley Bentayga on the channel recently. This sounds so much better than all of them, and it feels more dynamic than all of them as well. Um, just because of that V8 power you're getting through there, that Ferrari V8 has a very distinctive note to it that you just don't get with the, you know, the VW Group's um, twin turbo four liter V8. This definitely, definitely sounds better than that. Um, so where does it fall down in comparison to those cars? Well, it's not as dynamically capable. I mean, we're out on country roads at the moment and you start throwing it about a bit and the chassis deal is definitely not as dynamic and you get a lot more body roll and it just sort of lollops about a bit more. But I've always wondered with a car like this, you're buying a luxury SUV that, you know, you want to go fast in, don't you? I mean, you're buying the Trofeo version and in a straight line it delivers that. I mean, who's buying these cars to do track days? I, I've, I've often wondered that about this. If you can afford 150 grand for a premium luxury, super fast SUV, chances are you've probably got a few quid on the side that you could buy, you know, something a little more track focused or, you know, your weekend sports car type thing. And this, if you're covering long distances on a regular basis, the only drawback is how often you're going to be visiting the petrol station. It's got an 80 litre tank and that delivers a range of roughly 340 miles, which uh, it's fair to say that could be better. But again, you're buying the Trofeo version, you want that Ferrari V8 that is just the necessary compromise you're going to reach in having that. He's going to drink a bit of petrol. Um, yeah, we've been getting just over 20 mpg the whole time. I've spent a lot of time on the motorway. Like I said, we've been up to Leeds and back. Um, but I mean, it's just been so comfortable in that scenario. Um, you can just make such good progress. And the one word that always springs to mind when I've been thinking about this car is, is effortless. Just the progress you make is so serene and it's quiet in here it's comfortable but then you've always got that v8 just in the background that you can just know that you can call upon at any moment and there's something quite relaxing about that um we're all going to come across another drawback now because i am on a country road and there is a tractor coming towards us and this car is the size of a small house so we shall see how we get through this stay with me viewers um that is a Volvo XC90 in front. He's making heavy weather of this as well, but I think, yeah, he's got loads. He'll get through. We'll get through here. But it is, it is a wide car. But as you'll see, right, we're just kissing the hedge on the far side. Thank you, mate. We'll work that through there. I see you can get, get down a two-lane country road past the tractor in it, but it is quite wide. Um, but I've... Is a minor drawback. Uh, sorry, that probably wasn't the best viewing you're going to have <laughs> today. Um, but you know, it's good, good practicality point. Um, just, it's just the finishes in this car. It feels like a quality machine. Everything feels effortless. That word again, and it just it's serene, effortless. But when you want that noise, it is there. We'll just back off a bit, stick it back into Corsa, and just roars. I mean, that's what we're going to miss when EVs come in, because you get that instant torque delivery in this. In this, it just hunkers down for a second. It thinks about what it's going to do, and you get that moment. It just adds to the theatre where you feel the car drop, you feel your back lower a bit, and then BAM! Just that explosive power delivery straight off the line. Oh, it's, it's brilliant. Um, Overall, I mean, I guess I should probably try and draw some comparisons with like the Bentayga and the RS Q8, right? I mean, this is expensive. This is getting on for Bentayga prices. Um, you know, I think the Bentayga starts at 143. This with the options is 150. And the RS Q8, you can get the Vorsprung Edition. Uh, just have another listen to that exhaust because we can. Um, that comes with all the bells and whistles for 120,000 pounds. So yeah, this, this is quite expensive as well, but I think it is, it's more elegant. I think it's a slightly more sophisticated than that. It doesn't have the luxury touches of the Bentley, obviously, and the Bentley, once you've started ticking a couple of option extras on that, you're looking at 200 grand quite quickly. Um, but this, I mean, this really is an impressive SUV. I mean, yeah, it's not as dynamically competent as those cars. I don't think it's got the active anti-roll bar in it and all that sort of thing for your sort of B-road bashing. But again, 
who's buying a car like this to predominantly do b-road bashing is for covering long distances easily and it delivers on that and i have been really really impressed with this car and above all else i am really really going to miss that ferrari v8 engine it's worth buying for that alone because it is a masterpiece of an engine it is absolutely superb and the sound the sensation the feeling you get when you're driving it because of that engine yeah that's what makes this car stand out it's really really good i hope you've enjoyed this video um if you did like it please hit the like button um if you like this video and you'd like to see more videos like it please hit the subscribe button um we've got loads on the channel already we've got loads more coming up too uh we've got an aston martin dbs and we've got an aston martin dbx which is something else to compare this to as well um aston martin of course having into the suv game like everyone else uh, we've got ktm 620 we've got ferrari roma so same engine more horsepower less torque than this uh we've got polestar one so a hybrid powertrain um, we've also got the Cooper 4 Mentor in hybrid version as well and um, we've got Kia Stinger coming up as well and we've got a Range Rover SV Autobiography which again something else to compare and contrast this to so yeah hope you enjoyed this video please hit like please subscribe and yeah hopefully see you soon thanks